Well, welcome to this lecture on borders and identity. In this lecture, I discuss the relationship between border formation and identity formation. As I discussed in a previous lecture on spatial identities in general, the relation between an entity, the identity of an entity, like a nation or a region, and its neighbors is very important. And of course, then the borders have a significant meaning. Sometimes, in the case when the border is uh, the border is with another entity which is seen as something negative, the border is very much used to strengthen uh, the, the othering of the, the, the other group in question. For instance here, we see in Northern Ireland an orange march of uh, Ulster Unionists who really show their British identity, but they show their identity uh, towards an, mostly uh, a Catholic area. This is a, a, a housing estate where many Catholics live and in order to protect their identity and their feelings of identity they erected this temporary border in order that they don't see those marchers that much. The other picture on the, the right hand side shows a very different usage of border. This is the border between Germany and Poland which is opened. So it signifies the brothering uh, the strengthening of the brotherly relations between Germany and Poland on the occasion of the opening of the border in relation to the accession of Poland to the Schengen agreements. So the opening of the border is celebrated and the, 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 the European identity, the common European identity is thus strengthened. Well, I'll discuss in this lecture four different ways in which borders and identities are linked. First of all, I'll discuss how identities are formed within borders. Then I'll discuss how existing identities use borders to protect these identities. Then thirdly, I'll discuss how in cross-border regions also identities are formed, which are sometimes crossing the borders, but are sometimes very much opposed to each other. Then lastly, I'll discuss how border changes affect how identities are used. How are borders used to create identities? Well, the example of France is very illustrative. France, French national identity, very much stresses the importance of its six natural borders eh, along the Mediterranean, the Alps, the Rhine, more or less, the Marsh eh, and the, the Atlantic Ocean. Eh? Those six borders, those six natural borders are seen as constitutive of French national identity. It's part of the, the, the 16th century discourse on, uh, on, on the formation of territorial states. The importance of borders in the creation of states and also in the creation of national identities is discussed in the great book of Charles Meyer, Once Within Borders. Another great book on the relation between territories and identities is the book by Ansipasi, Territories, Boundaries and Consciousness. In this book, one of the topics is how the, the children in Finland are taught the, the borders and how the, the, those borders are related to national identity. So there are many instances in which borders are important for the formation of spatial identities. But the process could also take place in the, the other direction. Borders can also be used to protect pre-existing identities. The example of Germany is an obvious example of it. It, the state was only formed in the late 19th century, although the idea of a German nation was established long before that. And of course, the borders of those uh, groups with shared uh, basic characteristic of national identity language, uh, the language borders and the political borders, did not really coincide. So there's, there are two basic views on, uh, on, on borders and national identities. Uh, on the one hand, we have the French example of natural borders, eh, that the borders define more or less what is the, the national identity. And on the other hand, you have the idea of national borders, that you have a nation which should be uh, bordered by a state territory. But not only national borders are important for the protection of spatial identities. Also, borders within a state can be important. For instance, in Belgium, we have the famous language border, which runs from east to west and was established in 1960 
in order to protect the language of, of the Flemish in the north. Because over time, the official, more or less official uh, language of the Belgian state was French, that encroached ever more and more on the territory in the north, on, on, the, on the Flanders territory. So in at that time, in the 1960, that border was, was established and was fixed. And it's also important that it's, here you see Brussels, it also surrounds Brussels. So it's also a way to protect uh, Brussels from, uh, from becoming Walloon. Uh, although the majority, the vast majority of the people in Brussels speak French, they are still protected, their residual Flemish identity is protected by this language borders with runs to the south of Brussels, which uh, makes it impossible for uh, Walloon territory to connect up with the also mainly French-speaking Brussels territory. Well, there are many instances of how borders are used to protect identities within a state. Here you see the case of Chicago. They have electoral districts, and this electoral district, the fourth, is specifically bordered in order to make it possible for the Hispanic minority in Chicago to articulate themselves politically. So they create an artificial majority of Hispanic speaker, speaking people in this electoral district in order for that uh, Hispanic voice is also represented in, con in the Congress of Illinois. Sometimes uh, political parties feel that they need much more than just an internal border to protect their spatial identity and uh, to determine their own destiny. Then there arises the question of secession. For instance here, Catalonia, you see that it's a very different political makeup. Huh? This is a support, uh, map which shows the, the, the majority parties in, in, in uh, electoral districts. Here you see that it has a very different political makeup than, than the rest of Spain. Huh? The Partido Popular uh, hardly has any dominant forms of support in Catalonia. This is one of the reasons why people in Catalonia, the majority or something like that, wants to be independent. That creates a lot of tensions and people protest here in Brussels uh, in order to uh, get their claim for independence effectuated using the European route. In this YouTube video there are many other examples discussed on how identities and in independence, the struggle of independence, are linked. But sometimes political parties are successful in succession. Here is the case of, uh, of India and Pakistan, which were created through the secession of, of Pakistan from the, the British Indian state in 1948. And that led to, to the creation of a new border. And that has had, of course, some horrible effects for a large majority of the population uh, affected. Uh, the people living in the border area who found themselves on the wrong side of the religious border were really... Uh, affected by it, to, to say the least. Here you have a great YouTube video which shows what the effects of this bordering was for the, the relation between those uh, religious communities. Well, the third topic of this lecture is on identities which cross borders. For instance, here we have the border between the Netherlands and Germany near Kerkrade and Herzogenrat. Kerkrade on the Dutch side, Herzogenrat on the German side. Until the First World War, this twin town was more or less united. But during the First World War, the, the barrier was erected in order for the German soldiers not to defect to the Netherlands. That, that, that really affected the identity of, of uh, the people living in that area, although they identified to some extent with their own nation state, eh? the Germans with the German state, the Dutch with the Dutch state, they also had a kind of uh, distinct local identity, which was linked to uh, working more or less, or a large part of the population of the population worked in the same mine on the Dutch side of the border. They also had their own distinct Dutch and German uh, music groups, and they really objected. Uh, of being separate from each other. Here you see a picture 
of a, a, a common manifestation of that shared identity on both sides of the border. Here's the border fence. Well, as the border after the Second World War became more porous, uh, as you can see here, uh, the border fence has disappeared, relations became, became more friendly, even leading to the creation of a shared business center. Well, is everything all right at the internal borders? One well, can argue that there are a lot of uh, shared identities, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those identities, those border crossing identities, are the only identities which are dominant in those kind of areas. As you see here on this map, uh, which, which shows the above average support for populist nationalist parties, you see that the border areas all over Europe spring out as, as really the, the hotbeds of uh, new forms of nationalism. Oh, what well, can argue, which is basically done by this great paper of Frédéric Durand, Antoine de Gauville and Robert Knipschild, uh, one can argue that there are two types of uh, people living at the border. On the one hand, we, there are what I call border surfers, who profit from living in the two states at the same time. Eh? They profit from, from uh, price differentials, they live, for instance, in uh, one country and shop in another country, and that relation is protected by European, ci European citizenship. On the other hand, you have more or less the border sufferers, who are immobile, who really don't profit from uh, crossing the borders. Eh? Uh, I did some research in the, the border region between uh, Germany and France, and there you had uh, a huge difference between the frontaliers, uh, the people who spoke German uh, living in France, who worked in Germany and who profited from the high wages in, uh, in uh, Germany, and on the other hand, the people who couldn't uh, profit from that, uh, that labor market because they only spoke French. And that has big influence on how they look at the world. The border surfers are wider, and there are a lot of people who suffer from common market competition. For instance, the housing prices in the German part of the Dutch-German border area, here on the, here on the eastern side of the Netherlands and the west side of, of Germany, there you have a competition on the housing market between the Dutch people who move to, uh, to Germany because the houses are relatively cheap there and the local German population who suffer from the price rising effect of that migration. A well, fourth manner in which borders and identities are related is when borders change. Th these border changes can be seen as threatening identities and these identities can then thicken into resistance identities. We discussed that in a previous lecture on uh, the formation of resistance identities. For instance, in Finland, uh, in relation to the amalgamation of uh, three municipalities, there was a resistance identity formed in uh, Nurmu. But we also discussed a case of Goede Overflake, where in the old municipality of uh, Goederede, people, a majority of the population, a large majority of the population, objected being amalgamated with other municipalities on the island and that created a resistance identity. But also at other scale level resistance identities can be formed. For instance, one can argue that the UK campa campaign, eh, the campaign of the Brexiteers, was largely based uh, on a resistance identity uh, in which Brussels was seen as uh, the violator of the UK borders.